to Court TV Live, turning now to the next big trial we're covering here at Court TV. It's a staged suicide murder trial. It's out of Ohio. Defendant Matthew Moore is charged with the murder of his wife, Emily Noble, after she went missing in May 2020. Her body was found four months later, less than half a mile from her home. And experts believe her body had been staged to look like a suicide. Court TV legal correspondent Joy Lim Nagrin has more on the case. We got married. 8 28 18. This is the voice of Matthew Moore being interviewed on The Vanished, a podcast dedicated to the stories of missing people. And we would go for walks, she would go for walks, just right around here and other places, parks, and she was always picking edibles. We're homebodies. Super, uh, I don't know, earthy type people, hippie kind of. Moore is talking about his wife, Emily Noble. They had been married less than two years when she disappeared. Moore reported her missing the day after they celebrated her birthday on May 24th of 2020. According to reports, that night he went to sleep in the guest room, not wanting to disturb Emily. When he got up the next morning, she was gone. But her phone, wallet, keys, and car were all still at their home. It just doesn't make sense to me. She loves her friends and family dearly. Um, and she's very, very close to her friends. Her friends are like family. So the fact that no one would know where she was or that she would go missing um, told me that there was something really wrong. Then, four months after Noble disappeared, a shocking announcement. Tonight, Westerville police say a body has been found off of County Line Road. Let's take a look at the scene and what's happening right as we speak. You can see BCI crime scene unit is on scene investigating right here. The body was discovered in woods less than half a mile from where she lived. Identification followed. It was Emily Noble. I, you know, I never knew her husband, but his behavior from the start was extremely weird. So I became suspicious of him right away. Um, he was combative. We learned early on he wasn't cooperating with police. Still, it would be months before there were any answers to the questions raised by her friends and family. It was agony. Um, the police were as forthcoming as they could be, uh, but also explain they couldn't be very forthcoming. We knew that there was a, a great deal of evidence that had been collected. That evidence eventually led to this. Use your left hand and unlock the door. Put your hands back on your head. Do not move. Yes, sir. Police charged Moore with murder and felonious assault after the case was reviewed by a strangulation expert. He said that this was clearly a homicide based on the injuries that were sustained and the mechanism of those injuries. He also gave his opinion that her body was staged to appear as though it was a suicide. And in his opinion, that was absolutely not the case. Matthew Moore disagrees. He's pled not guilty and maintains his innocence. The jury selection is scheduled to begin on Tuesday. Once the trial begins, you can watch it, of course, right here on Court TV Live. Still with me, trial attorney Jenny Alcotti in Columbus, Ohio, a former prosecutor and trial attorney Rosalind Charles in West Orange, New Jersey. Jenny, in your home turf, Ohio case here. Um, interesting to me, uh, stand, standing out that uh, staged suicide. Obviously, the prosecutors think they have the evidence from those experts, medical experts, on how her injuries unfolded, that they can disprove that it actually was suicide. What are your initial thoughts seeing this evidence? So my initial thoughts are going to be, you know, if Moore is indicating that he was not the person that did this, um, it could be that they're going to try and state that somebody else uh, committed the homicide. So that's my initial thought with that piece of evidence. Now, with regards to the evidence um, that has already been shown that, you know, it's half a mile away from their house. It was staged. I don't know how it could have been anybody else. So I'm very curious to see, you know, what testimony is going to come about um, to make that determination that it was more that committed the homicide that committed the homicide sure it seems as though it's going to be a battle of the experts prosecutors will bring in their medical experts to talk about injuries to her face and head that don't align with the hanging type of suicide and of course the defense wants to bring in their own medical excerpt experts they've re states requested a dauber hearing over the qualifications of the defense experts to talk about no it is possible that these injuries could have resulted from a hanging also the defense wants and wants to bring in therapy records saying that, of course, she had some issues, some mental health type issues that could uh, go to this as a suicide. So this battle of the experts is going to be quite interesting. Rosalind, what are your thoughts? 
Oh, absolutely. This battle will be quite interesting. However, I don't think we're going to be the uh, defense is going to be able to get beyond the fact that the um, injuries to the body uh, indicate a strangulation. And I, I just fail to see how somebody commit suicide by strangling themselves. So the ex, you know the experts can um, talk all they want and opine all they want. But at the end of the day, uh, we've got a lady who's got various kind of fractures around her neck consistent with strangulation. So, um, and there's no hanging in this particular case. And I don't know that you can even ha hang and receive those kinds of injuries. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, defense has a as an uphill battle, at least toward causation. Now, as it comes to who actually quote unquote done it, um, they may have something to talk about. But again, the proximity, and of course, we always look at the husband when the yeah. wife is missing. Exactly, great point there. Another thing that stood out to me, the there's a joint motion from both the state and defense to visit. A, the crime scene, a jury view. They both, both sides want them to go and see where this, where her body was found. Um, Jenny, what are your thoughts on that? Is that, a, is that smart for both sides to want to take them to this location? Not far, like you said, from the home at all. Do I think it's smart for defense? I don't necessarily think so, um, but for the prosecution, absolutely. So I'm curious what defense's angle is there. My expectations with it is probably to show um, that, you know, the surrounding circumstances maybe could have been that somebody else committed this crime or, you know, that it's in near proximity to other houses. Therefore, it could have been somebody else or maybe that, you know, the hanging actually was, um, you know, something to do with her also you know she hung herself and then she committed strangulation as well so i think those therapy records are going to be vital for the defense's um case in chief to show that you know she was suicidal if that's the case um so i think it's more beneficial for the prosecution and the defense will use it with additional evidence and there was something else really interesting, Roz, that I'm going to go to you on, is Moore's ex-wife spoke to the media, of course, after this happened, and she talks about, you know, that how he was violent towards her during their marriage, but also says that their son, their 17-year-old son, died by hanging in a park the summer before this victim, his wife, current wife, was found. And there, so it seems wants to, that they want to indicate that maybe he got the idea from how his son died and staged his wife's death that way. Is that anything that this jury may possibly hear about? Uh, uh, that could potentially be a red herring unless the prosecution and, and then being more deemed more prejudicial than probative in this particular case, unless the prosecution's going to try and say, ah, he hung his son. And I think that's a stretch. So um, I would say no at this particular juncture. Yeah, I think, yeah, probative, prejudicial, that's a good argument uh, coming from a defense attorney there. Um, it's, it's all going to unfold, of course, next week, jury selection on Tuesday. I